is uh, 1 o'clock, March 18th, 2024, and I call this meeting of the Veterans and Military Affairs Committee to order. We have a, a jammed agenda today, so uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, all the people presenting bills, testifiers, uh, to really keep their comments as brief as possible. Uh, and uh, we will get through the 10 bills today. I don't want to have an evening meeting. Um, first of all, uh, Lee Bliss, if you, have you had a chance to look at the minutes? I actually have, Mr. Chair, and I'd like to move the minutes. Uh, Lee Bliss moves the minutes of uh, March 11, 2024. Anyone commenting on the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of the minutes, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, sir. Um, Representative Norris, will you lead us in the uh, pledge of allegiance? Yes. Eric? I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, the first bill on the uh, agenda for today is uh, uh, the Garofalo bill from last year, number 837, and that bill has to do with uh, burial for uh, spouses <coughs> of, uh, of veterans at the state cemeteries. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, cover this for Representative Garofalo, and I don't know if Mr. Johnson wants to testify, uh, but. What we're doing is uh, the bill as we laid it over last year called for the money to come from the SOT funds. Those are the funds that come out of the license plates for so support our troops. Uh, we're changing that so it comes out of general funds. Uh, and the bill will be laid over. So I, what I have is the uh, A1 amendment. Um, and that simply does that. It, it moves it from... SOT funds to general funds. However, it didn't remove the SOT funds uh, appropriation in there. So that in the event we exceed the amount that's in this bill, uh, SOT funds could be used for burial of spouses. Spouses, rather. So, uh, would I like to. A4, we want to. That's the first version. <coughs> okay, this is E4. Yeah, what the first. Okay. So what I'd like to do is move the A4 amendment. Uh, is there any discussion to the to the, the amendment or to the bill itself? Okay. Seeing none, the bill will be laid over, um, and uh, it'll it'll really depend on whether or not we we get appropriations from the uh, from the speaker as to whether it moves forward. Do you want to vote on the A4? Um, yeah, let's vote on the A4 amendment to adopt the A4 amendment. All in favor of the A4 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, good. The amendment is adopted and the bill is laid over. Next we have uh, Representative Budella. You're up for a couple of bills here, Representative Budella. <coughs> Does someone want to talk about it? Uh, House File 837, is there anyone in the audience? Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Please identify yourself for the record. Hmm? I did. Chair Newton, members of the committee, Ben Johnson, Le uh, Legislative Director, Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs, also the Interim Programs and Services uh, Deputy Commissioner. Um, on, on 837, <coughs> the amendment, uh, I, would just, uh, I would just note that we would reserve the opportunity to speak about it again as it's tabled when it comes up again. We would like to offer some testimony with the A4 amendment included. Good. Good. So. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Johnson? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, Representative Hudella, if you'd uh, present your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Shane Hudella, uh, I'd like to move House File 1666, please. Okay. 
Okay, that's that's fair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had him turn around. Um, if you would uh, uh, tell us about your bill, uh, Representative Hudella, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We heard the bill once already. It's it's a super easy bill. Um, two minutes or less at the podium my, is my goal right now. Uh, this is simply going to allow county veteran service officers to pull records on veterans that they're trying to obtain benefits for at no cost. Um, delay in the past or the only difference between now and our hearing a few weeks ago, we did get the fiscal note back which confirmed there's zero cost to the state of Minnesota <coughs> on this bill. So um, everything else is absolutely the same with the bill. Okay, Representative Hudella moves that House File 1666 be recommended to be placed on the general register. Uh, do we have the vote on that? Yeah. All in favor of uh, moving this bill to the general register, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, good. That bill is on its way. And you have two more, Representative Hudella. All right. Um, next up, uh, I'd like to move, I got to find the bill number quick, uh, House File 4769. Okay. <coughs> okay, Representative Udella moves House File 4769 be laid over for possible inclusion. And I see we have some testifiers uh, who come forward. Again, I would like to ask all of you to uh, please be as brief as you, as you can. Uh, first, please identify yourself for the record. I'm Sean Kaur, the Executive Director of the Eagles Healing Nest. Okay. And Shane Hudella, once again. Okay. Um, so thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members. Um, super quick background here. Eagles Healing Nest has been around for a while. Um, they have an incredibly important mission that's filling a gap in the veteran community right now. Um, they take in uh, at one of their two facilities in Sock Center, Redwood Falls. Um, veterans that have struggled with PTSD, addiction, um, uh, potentially incarceration and other issues. And, and what I love about this program is it's, it's veterans helping veterans and there's no set timetable. So um, they may have a veteran come into the program that might take two, three months to get through it. They might have some that take a year or more to get through it and they provide housing, critical um, counseling services and a whole array of different things. So um, the organization has done great. Uh, like many organizations struggled a little bit during COVID and, and now coming out of COVID, uh, felt the need to make a leadership change and, and brought in retired Command Sergeant Major Sean Corr um, to head the organization. I had the honor of serving with uh, Sergeant Major Retired uh, Corps for a number of years and, and just wanted to um, uh, speak to his work, work ethic, his candor, his honesty, um, all those values that we revere in the military community um, and, and have them here today and I'll let them talk about uh, what the appropriation is for specifically, um, but would love to, to see them receive a leg up if, if funds are available this year. Thank you. Good, thank you. Sergeant Major Corr. Thanks for the kind word, Representative Hidella. Um I'm Sean Corr. I've been up at the Eagles Healing Nest now for about four months, and I would be hard pressed to find something more purposeful than the Eagles Healing Nest. Uh, we are not a, a handout for veterans, we are a hand up. And our model out there is veterans taking care of veterans from forming their own peer-to-peer -peer programs, leading each other through groups, but we also provide critical outpatient care for folks up there also. This appropriation, um, if allotted to us, is going to be used to reinvigorate some of those programs after coming out of COVID, new equipment for them. Mainly, uh, we're a board and lodge facility, so in large part, a lot of this money is going to go towards us opening up one of the other facilities that we've been working towards on our campus that's going to allow us to house up to an additional 16 female veterans out there, which is, that's our priority right now in the, in the near term. So. Good. 
And you, I see you have other testifiers as well. You're asking for 200,000, is that the correct amount? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, and if the other testifiers would like to come up and uh, briefly state their position. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, sir, if you'd identify yourself for the record. My name is Kim Wicks, and I'm on the board of directors at the Eagles Healing Nest. I'm a retired military officer, and I have served previously uh, running a veteran's home in Utah, so I know the veterans care. And the Healing Nest is just an incredible way that the veterans help each other. And it's a very cost-effective way that we are able to reach out and uh, meet the needs of these uh, ladies and gentlemen that really truly need our help. Um, the one thing I can promise you is that any funds that you do give us will be used properly, will be used to help the veterans, and um, I'll swear on that, on whatever you want me to swear on, I promise you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And I think we have one more uh, testifier. Hello. Hello, please identify yourself for the record. Hi, my name is Dylan Turk. Um, right in January, I uh, got really sick when I was uh, trying to renovate my farmhouse over in Superior, Wisconsin. I had pneumonia and I didn't really have a place to go. I wasn't able to afford to get my furnace fixed yet. And so I was bullheaded and I stayed in the house anyway, so it was 30 degrees. And so after I got really sick, I called the Eagles Healing Nest and I'm like, will you guys please help me get better? As I've never been that sick before in my life. And they took me in, and I feel a lot better now. And I'm, I don't have to go back to my empty, broken house without sheetrock or insulation. I have a place to stay now with some brothers that I really, really love. Uh, I'm sober, and I'm happy, and I have something to look forward to now. And it feels very empowering compared to how I felt before. So thank you. Good. Thank you, Dylan. And I, I, I have to comment that I've been up to uh, the Healing Nest multiple times and helped uh, Ms. Butler initiate the, uh, the, the program in 2012. Uh, I know there's been financial issues, and I just got a, a message from the Attorney General this morning that he's reached a settlement with Ms. Butler and that uh, he seems to be happy with the fact that we're, we're moving forward and the, that you're doing what you're doing there. So, uh, Representative Hudella, if, if you would like to make closing remarks, this will be laid over to see if we do uh, receive any funding from the speaker. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I think the members know on, um, on our committee that, that I'm detail-oriented when it comes to nonprofit organizations, military or otherwise. So, um, just talking with the new leadership and their board, it's a great group. They give back 80 to 85 percent as their typical charitable giving range, which is outstanding. Um, they're able to help hundreds of veterans every year between the two facilities. Um, excited. I, I wouldn't be here and have this group before us if they didn't have a leadership change in place. So um, appreciate the consideration and uh, hoping that we can give them a, a hand up this year like they're doing every day to the veteran community. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Representative Fidella. The bill is laid over. Uh, next on the agenda, we have Representative Elkins. Well, he's coming up. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this, uh, this bill? Okay, seeing none, I don't see. Uh... Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Elkins, if you would uh, introduce your, or you're looking at House File 3677, yep. and uh, the recommendation is that it be placed on the general register. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chair. And we have uh, an A, um, uh, sorry, a, a, is it actually a DE amendment to this bill? Okay. I can explain. So uh, the bill, as uh, introduced and originally um, heard here, uh, basically would extend a, a, a permission for counties that are currently allowed 
uh, to contribute up to $300 uh, for Memorial Day um, celebrations. We extend that to Veterans Day. The amendment will um, merge this with uh, a, another bill, uh, House File 4201 from Representative Schomacher. Uh, that would lifts the, the cap on the donations. So the bill as amended would basically uh, authorize uh, counties to uh, give an indeterminate grant uh, for celebrations uh, for both Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Thank you. And I see Representative Schumacher is here. If you would like to uh, come forward and make any comments that you have on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, I would support the DE amendment, uh, first and foremost, to encourage that. And this bill really just came from uh, my own county commissioners asking to get a real, little relief on that, let them put the, the money where they see the most fit. And their focus was on Memorial Day and in their request, but um, are happy to support this. And uh, yeah, they would be here today, but it's about a four and a half hour drive for them to, to get here. And they were just hoping that we'd get this done and get it done quickly for them instead of uh, having them come up to do that. So thank you for the support. Thank you, Representative Schumacher. So the A1 uh, amendment is before us. All in favor of the uh, A1, or it's a DE amendment, right? Yeah. DE amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay, the amendment is approved. And um, I believe that Mr. Baker is in the audience and would like to testify also. Good afternoon, Morning. Mr. Chair, uh, committee members, uh, John Baker, Executive Director of Minnesota Association of County Veteran Service Officers. I have testified on both of these bills in the House and the Senate now. Uh, our association does support both of these bills. Good. Thank you. Uh, do you have any further comments, Representative Elkins? Uh, no, that's about it, Mr. Chair. I think the, uh, the motion here, we want to um, refer this to the General Register. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. So all in favor of moving uh, House File 3677 as amended to the General Register, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that bill is on its way. Uh, House File 4742, Representative Ring. Welcome to the committee. Uh, please state your name for the uh, for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Lucy Reem, representative, and I am here with um, a guest of mine, Christy Janigo. <coughs> okay. Uh, and would you like to introduce your uh, bill, uh, Representative Reem? Yes, yeah, so I have um, House File 4742 um, before the committee. It's a bill that would uh, encourage the University of Minnesota to provide disabled veterans and one guest free, unlimited access to the Landscape Arboretum in Chanhassen. Um, it defines what a disabled veteran is uh, as a veteran with a permanent service or connected disability as certified in writing by the United States Department of Veteran Affairs or the Minnesota Department of Veteran Affairs. And to prove eligibility, an eligible veteran would be required to present a veteran photo ID card that includes the term service connected. Good, thank you. And uh, Ms. Janigo, if you'd like to uh, identify yourself and uh, speak to the bill. Yes, Mr. Chair and members, Representative Reem. My name is Dr. Christy Janigo and I'm the American Legion Department of Minnesota Legislative Chair. Um, thank you for bringing forward this bill. It was the idea of one of our members, Mike Schachterly, who is here with his friend Earl out in the audience. Um, so it's an example of great civic engagement with our members in bringing this forth. Uh, while this bill is not on the official Legion platform, it's in line with other things we're trying to get done. I cannot emphasize enough the mental health benefits of being among plants, nature trails, flowers, and trees. We truly have a gem right here in the Southern Metro in the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. <clears throat> Regarding identification to prove a veteran service connected disability for free admission, a picture ID would be issued by the Veterans Health Administration um, and those who are service connected can stop down to the VA Medical Center enrollment desk to get that done. 
Um, the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs annual report showed 294,232 total Minnesota veterans. Vietnam War era veterans represent the largest number, over 94,000 veterans. And we have almost 50,000 post 9-11 era veterans, which is my generation. 105 veterans died by suicide in Minnesota last year, which is typical for how many people we usually lose to suicide each year in the state. I mention this because of the positive mental health impacts nature can have. So this would be a suicide prevention measure. And frankly, we need every resource possible to throw at this problem. In terms of the cost of this bill, it would be hard to estimate how much revenue would be lost from providing this free admission where the rate is currently set at $15 per adult non-member at the Arboretum. I visited the VA's National Center for Veteran <coughs> Analysis and Statistics website to provide a few more estimations for you today. So as of September 30th, 2020, 100,158 Minnesota veterans <coughs> are receiving VA disability compensation or roughly a third of Minnesota veterans. Um, so do a, a little bit of math for you. The Arboretum receives around 600,000 visitors each year. And the number of veterans in Minnesota represents about 5% of the total Minnesota population. Applying that 5% to 600,000 visitors is around 30,000 Minnesota veterans who feasibly visit, visit the Arboretum each, each year. And then cut that number in third for veterans with service-connected disabilities, and you have around 10,000 veterans. So that cost would be around 150,000 in lost admissions for the veterans. And then if you add that guest in, assuming every veteran brought one guest, that'd be a cost of about 300,000 each year. Um, but I would venture to say that it would likely be far less than that because veterans are humble people and often don't take it advantage of all the benefits in front of them to save it for the guy who needs it most. Um, so thanks again, Mr. Chair, members and Representative Reem. I think that's about all I have to say today. Good, thank you, Mr. Ginego. Um, yeah, and this, this follows in line, you know, with what we do at the state parks and also for public uh, transportation. Veterans who are service-connected disabilities uh, can, can access those uh, facilities freely. So um, do you have any additional con comments, Representative Reem? Um, well, thank you to Dr. Janigo for um, helping to testify in support of this bill. Um, I've lived in Chanhassen for 27 years, and the Arboretum is a real gem. Um, and it is very therapeutic to be able to go there and experience uh, the acreage that they have there. They have so many <coughs> different programs, and uh, nature heals. And you know, I think we can we can show studies that would prove this. But I think this is an especially great idea um, that was brought to me, and I would encourage um, all of you to support it. Thank you. Thank you. And Representative Bliss, I believe you have a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, question on the disability. Um, we, we state disabled veteran and then uh, permanent service-connected disability. Um, do you know what level that is? I mean, I, I have ringing in my ears and I could go to the and get 10% disabled on that. And would that be covered under this bill? Or is it 70%, uh, 100%? Is there a, is there a level that, that you stop at? Um. No, I, I can answer that. Actually, it's the same as for state parks or for public transportation. As long as you have a VA health certificate or the, the card, a VA card that shows service connected on it, okay, you're you would be eligible. All right, thank you. So there's no there's no ten percent or ninety percent or hundred percent. Uh, Just to clarify, clarify yeah. that. Thank you. And do we have anyone else who would like to speak to this bill? Okay, I see people shaking their heads. No. Uh, thank you very much. The uh, bill is, uh, well, we have to move this bill to the general register. So all in favor of moving House File 4742 to the general register, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Good. You are on your way to the general register. Representative Weens, we have a couple of bills from you, I think. On the way. <clears throat> uh, Chair Newton, uh, I'm, I'm Representative Mark Weens, uh, representing the good people of Washington County, and I move House File 4038, the congressionally congressionally chartered 
uh, veteran service organizations uh, exempt from property tax for consideration or referral to the tax committee. Thank you, Representative uh, Weens. If you'd like to explain your bill, please. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, this this bill um, is being carried in the Senate by Senator Mitchell. Uh, it is one of the top priorities of the Commander's Task Force. Um, in this bill, there is no cost to the state. However, there will be some costs that will have to be absorbed by the counties uh, in a loss of revenue. Um, it, it, it does, uh, uh, House file, uh, the House file uh, does uh, abide by one of our important pillars in this committee, and that is to help our American legions and VFWs survive and be viable uh, in this uh, post-COVID season. Um, over, uh, over the past, uh, uh, I guess, a couple of sessions, um, this has been a, a top priority, and the property tax adjustments for uh, these congressionally chartered veteran service organizations uh, has changed from 2% to 1.5% down to 1%, and uh, now we're asking uh, that they be tax exempt uh, at this point. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't make one historical comment uh, at this time, and if we've got uh, a moment for me to do that, Mr. Please, Chair. Please. Um, uh, back, in, uh, back during uh, World War II, we had a tank company in Brainerd. Uh, it was called Bravo Company of 194th Armor. Um, during protective mobilization in 1941, uh, it deployed to the Philippines. Uh, it was uh, of uh, several forces that were put on the Philippines. They trained, they were helping uh, the native Filipino troops uh, in preparation for possible hostilities. On December 8th, 1941, so after Pearl Harbor, uh, they were invaded. They fought, they fought very, very, very uh, fervently for about four and a half months, uh, and then they were ordered to, to surrender. Um, those folks uh, went through the Bataan Death March, uh, which will be celebrated uh, April 9th here in Minnesota. Uh, and those that survived the Death March went on to camps that were called POW camps, but were much like death camps. Some went on the death ships. Um, the survivors, uh, after uh, almost four years of captivity coming back to Minnesota, um, were the prime people building their lives back, their careers, their families, joined these veteran service organizations and populated them here, not just in the state of Minnesota, but across the country. Um, they found that these veteran service organizations helped them um, in their camaraderie with those that, uh, that had the same uh, type service experience. As well, it was therapy. Maybe after a couple of beers, the therapy got better. So at this time, I've, uh, I've got a couple of witnesses here, and I'll go on to uh, Dr. Uh, Jericho. Yes, uh, greetings, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Dr. Christy Janigo. Before I go any further, I want you to know that this bill, HF 4038, is wholeheartedly supported by the eight organizations of the Minnesota Commander's Task Force, which represents tens of thousands of Minnesota veterans in our combined memberships, among the American Legion, the VFW, the Disabled American Veterans, the Paralyzed Veterans of America, the Military Order of the Purple Heart, AMVETS, Marine Corps League, and the Jewish War Veterans. They have been working on this issue for years. Um, I'm here with Commander Paul Hassing of the American Legion. We have our department adjutant, Mike Maxa, here, and a contingent of Legionnaires, both to my side here and behind me. Uh, Representative Waynes and this impressive slate of bipartisan authors, thank you for introducing this bill. In my opinion, it is one of the most important issues on both the CTF and the Legion's platform this year because we've seen a disturbing amount of our posts uh, losing their buildings. <coughs> Many 501c3 nonprofit organizations receive property tax exemptions after qualifying through their county assessor. Veteran service organizations often have other designations such as 501c4 or 501c19. We're asking for access to the same nonprofit property tax exemptions provided to 501c3 nonprofits. And congressionally chartered veterans service organizations, in case you didn't know, do have a federal requirement of reporting their volunteer and charitable efforts directly to Congress annually. And because of that accountability, it does make sense for them not to pay property taxes. There are a handful of states that provide the same benefit as a recognition of the good veteran service organizations do for their communities, and Minnesota really should be among them. As a side benefit, a zero tax measure would clear up much of the confusion city and county assessors statewide have 
regarding veterans post and tax laws. Uh, people make assumptions about our buildings that they're just bars or restaurants or places to gamble and that's just not true. So much more happens in our buildings. We have our post meetings there where our membership decides which local organizations to donate proceeds from charitable gambling. In this manner, we prop up small local nonprofits providing important community services, including youth sports, addressing food insecurity and homelessness, and funding public safety equipment for our cities, such as fire trucks. These are important gaps filled that federal, state, and local government can't address. And our halls are places where people gather for birthday parties, celebrations of life, and weddings. In small towns, our posts are the only option for some of these gatherings. Uh, every year, my post in Osseo holds a Santa event where area children can come to have a free breakfast, receive a free toy, and get their picture taken with Santa and Mrs. Claus. Hundreds of children came this year, and it was clear to me that the, this event has become a public service. Post homes can be important meeting places to get business done to help veterans. For my day job, I'm an assistant county veteran service officer, and I've met homeless veterans there to counsel them on their housing programs, call them an ancient anxious spouse of a veteran and make an application to veteran homes or meet veterans to discuss VA benefits claims at these posts. The American Legion Department of Minnesota has a total of 531 posts, but more than half of our posts already do not have buildings. 260 of our posts have buildings with bars and restaurants, and of these, several are struggling and at risk of closing in the near future. Um, so with me, there will be a couple members representing some of those posts. Um, so my final question to you is how many more communities will need to lose their gatherings, <coughs> charity fundraising and activities before we provide relief to them? Um, thanks again for hearing this bill and I, I will yield to my colleague here. Uh, thank you, Dr. Janigo. Uh, sir, if you'd identify yourself for the record, please. Richard Ward, Commander, 5th District, American Legion, Department of Minnesota. Good. Mr. Ward, thank you, thank, uh, go ahead. Thank you very much for inviting us here this afternoon. Uh, you have before you my written testimony, Dr. Jangle's written testimony, and her comments today. I will use that as a platform for my remarks this afternoon. Most <coughs> Legion posts chartered before 1940 were in, named in honor of veterans who lost their lives of combat during World War I. Wold Chamberlain American Legion Post 99 honors two local veteran pilots, Ernest Wold and Cyrus Chamberlain. Walt Chamberlain Post 99 is celebrating their 90th birthday in the city of Minneapolis. They are the quintessential example of an American Legion Post with volunteers servicing the needs of their veterans in the surrounding neighborhood. They are an institution in South Minneapolis and they are woven into the fabric of the community. Minneapolis has a current population of approximately 424,000 residents. It only has two American Legion Posts in Minneapolis, one of which is Walt Chamberlain Post 99. Throughout all of your deliberations of this issue at hand, I assume you've been exposed to research, statistics, spreadsheets, PowerPoint explanations of the current state of affairs with the American Legion Minnesota. Undoubtedly, each one of you has formed an opinion, personal opinion, in your mind's eye, you may hold a portrait of what you believe to be the typical American Legion Post. Perhaps you visualize a modern club with robust income streams, live music, full dining room, electronic pull tabs, and the like, bristling with activities in a festive environment. For sure, there are some of those posts. Old Chamberlain Post 99 is not one of those posts. They are housed in an old church in South Minneapolis neighborhood, where they go about the business of the American Legion supporting our veterans as they have done for the past 90 years. I propose an alternate learning opportunity for you to consider in your familiarization of the State of the American Legion of Minnesota. I personally invite each one of the members of the committee to a pancake breakfast this coming Sunday at Wold Chamberlain Post 99, 5600 34th Avenue South, Minneapolis, 8.30 to noon. And if I am there, I'll give you a tour of the post and that won't take very long. You will witness football players from Minneapolis Roosevelt High School busing dishes to earn funds for their athletics program. You will see the salt of the earth, American Legion family members volunteering their time and efforts to support their mission. Your meal will be delivered in the basement of an old church and it may be the most definitive $10 pancake breakfast you'll ever have. 
Post 99 is very conservative, fiscally frugal, and marshalling their resources, and they've done a fine job in the past 90 years. Reserves were available for contingencies were not anticipated. Modest income was produced by pancakes, and occasional hall rental for families and friends. COVID-19 stopped the hall rental, income ceased. Reserves were in place to help ongoing expenses, but dropped to alarming levels. Post 99 did everything within their power to ensure their survivability. This property tax issue of approximately $13,000 per year is an extremely difficult burden for them to negotiate and they're holding on as best they can. The resolution of the property tax issue is both urgent and important to veterans organizations across Minnesota. There are more post 99s out there than you can imagine and they are all under duress. If your deliberations prolong for six months, 12 months, 18 months, the final resolution may be too late for many of them, including Will Chamberlain Post 99. Perhaps there's a way to defer, temporarily suspend, or in another fashion, relieve these important institutions of their current tax liability burden until this issue is finalized. The Will Chamberlain Posts may live to see another day. Once they're gone, they're gone. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Roy. Sir, if you'd identify yourself for the record, please. My name is John Weiss. I am the state <coughs> commander for the Sons of the American Legion, although I am not here to represent them. Members of the committee, Mr. Chair, I am a member of Arcade Fail and American Legion Post. We are the last home post in the city of St. Paul. In other words, we are the last building of the Legion in the city of St. Paul. Our building hosts many, many neighborhood events. We rent our hall out. We also donate our hall for civic events, uh, the junior ROTC at Johnson High School, for example, um, celebrations of life in the neighborhood. Up until COVID, we hosted the National Night Out in our neighborhood. We are very civic uh, responsible in our neighborhood. Um, it's a very diverse neighborhood. Um, our biggest problem is actually keeping the doors open since COVID. Our um, revenue has decreased quite a bit. Um, our gambling revenue has gone down, but gambling pays our property taxes. Last year we paid over $8,000, and if the property, taxes in, property tax increases happen that they are moving forward with, we will be over $10,000 a year in property taxes in the city of St. Paul and Ramsey County. This kind of relief would be extraordinary to us. It would help us do more funding for the charities and the programs that we support in the city of St. Paul. Um, we tend to stay a little more local than a lot of posts, some of the bigger ones, but we are very active in our community in many different ways. And we get out, do a get out the vote drive, we do Veterans Day programs, we do the Memorial Day program, and these things, this property tax relief would help us greatly. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. White. Is there anyone else who would like to testify to the bill? Seeing none, uh, Representative Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to uh, say, uh, for the record, how important this is that we reduce the property tax obligation for our veterans' buildings, our legions, and so forth. And I'm really hoping that as this moves into the tax committee, potentially Chair Lizagard would be willing to hear this bill in his committee as well, how vital and important it is to veteran organizations. Mm -hmm. Chair Lizagard. Thank you. Yeah, this is extremely incredible. I know that there is concerns about $23 million being shifted on to um, um, others, um, but I am definitely willing. It has to go to Chair Gomez to be handed down to me. I will um, speak with her and ask. Um, I, I'm also uh, supportive of uh, the gambling bill um, that would reduce your taxes uh, across the state of Minnesota by $40 million. And uh, part of that bill that I'm carrying would also allow all these organizations, um, VFWs and American Legions, to spend more of your money to be able to take care of your facilities. So there's um, multiple paths um, for us to be able to help. That's what I'm committed to doing. Thank you, Chair Lissigard, for the comments and the uh, uh, advertisement for your bill. <laughs> uh, Representative Weins, would you like to wrap this up, please? 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate uh, <coughs> the testimony of the witnesses here uh, to, to today. Uh, as you all understand, the uh, just uh, the point that we're at—it's one of those tipping points uh, about having those community-based veteran service organizations that are congressionally chartered. Um, I also want to thank. This is a bipartisan bill, uh, not only as a Commander's Task Force bill, bipartisan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, for being a co-author. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Elkins and <coughs> Lead Bliss, as well as many of you that are uh, that are around the table today. Uh, we are together in this. Uh, also, a special thank thanks to Mr. Holquist for uh, helping me prep and, and getting things lined up. Uh, Mr. Chair, fellow committee members, uh, I appreciate your support for uh, HF uh, uh, 4038 um, and our veterans in every Minnesota community. Thank you. Representative Weens renews his motion that HF 4038 be referred to the Taxes Committee. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Good. That bill is on its way to the Taxes Committee. Your next bill, Representative Weens. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, do I need to introduce myself again? No. Uh, I don't. I'm on the dais. I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, <laughs> I move uh, House File 4134. This is the veteran's definition expanded for a driver's license uh, for consideration referral to the Transportation Committee. Okay. Uh, and you have an amendment to the uh, bill? I do, sir. Um, uh, the A1 amendment um, uh, basically takes the original bill uh, as dropped uh, and breaks it into two. It, it breaks it into the uh, veterans expanded driver's license and then there was another portion that had to do with, uh, with burial benefits. Uh, after talking with the author from the Senate, uh, we decided that the uh, second part, this, the, the burial proceeds and such, uh, was, was really a bridge too far and we wanted to focus in on uh, the, the part about uh, the veterans designation on the driver's license. So that's in just what, what my A1 amendment's about. Is there any comments regarding the A1 amendment? Seeing none, all in favor of uh, the A1 amendment to House File 4134, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, that amendment has been approved. And uh, to the bill itself, Representative Weens. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, so uh, 4134 um, is, uh, also supports our pillars. Uh, our number one pillar is making Minnesota an attractive place for veterans to work and live. Um, basically what this, uh, this would do, uh, uh, a fiscal note has been requested but um, is probably not necessary because this would just be in addition to what's already uh, done on, on licenses. Um, in a conversation with the, the Senate author and also with MDVA, um, uh, the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, we've discussed uh, how the implementation of this may work and there is still some ongoing work with that. Uh, but other than that, um, this uh, is ready for a vote, sir. Good, and I believe we have uh, testifier, Mr. Johnson. If you'd re-identify yourself, please. Uh, Chair Newton, members of the committee, Benjamin Johnson, Legislative Director for MDVA. I'm also the Interim Deputy Commissioner of Programs and Services. I just wanted to say thank you, first of all, for the uh, amendment to re remove the uh, language related to the burials. Uh, we appreciate your work on that, and thank you for, for uh, heeding our request. Um, testimony for the remaining portion of the bill is, in essence, this does not have a direct impact on MDVA. It is a public safety affiliated bill. It has a change to the, uh, to the licensor and um, driver's license and Minnesota ID cards. Um, the, the reality is that our, our only real concern here is that is any confusion that might result from um, from those who honorably served, stood up and raised their hand and said, I'm willing to serve in the Guard or Reserve. Uh, who may now believe that they're eligible for other benefits uh, not not uh, communicated by this language. So recognition for that service is certainly important. We don't want to diminish it at all. <coughs> Our only concern, again, is any sort of mission creep related to someone thinking, what else am I now eligible for? Other than that, we're supportive of that recognition. We thank the representative for his um, authorship. Good. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, committee members, do any of you have any comments regarding the bill? This is, this is a bit of a stretch, uh, and uh, I'm curious to see what Transportation Committee will, will say, but um, seeing no further 
comments. Anyone in the audience like to testify? Seeing none, uh, all in favor of um, moving House File 4134 as amended to the uh, Transportation uh, Finance and Policy Committee signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, this bill is on its way to transportation. Representative Weins, you have one more. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, nothing like the, the trifecta. <laughs> um, this, uh, this last bill for me today, um, I move House File 4976. It's tuition-free college for Purple Heart veterans uh, and their children for consideration referral to higher education. Okay, if you would uh, speak to your bill, please. Uh, sir, this uh, bill originated uh, in the Senate with Senator uh, Dornick, um, and a fiscal note was uh, requested. It is, uh, it, it'll probably be um, a little bit larger than a normal uh, normal bill, so we have some more research to do. Uh, and um, currently, uh, uh, one of the uh, RFIs, or requests for information we had uh, for, uh, with the um, Department of uh, Veterans Affairs is how many Purple Heart recipients uh, do we have in Minnesota? Uh, and we just got uh, that data today. It's uh, 1,368. Uh, and uh, because this bill also would have benefits for their children, uh, we have that out there. And uh, that's a little bit uh, deeper dive. Uh, and we don't have that uh, data right now. Um, so in essence, uh, what this bill does, um, for, for those who have served, uh, receiving a Purple Heart is uh, an award. I shouldn't say an award. Um, it, it is a medal that um, is signified by someone who has been wounded in combat. They have uh, sacrificed themselves uh, and they have been wounded. And it's, it's no light thing that we consider how, how we can help these veterans out uh, who have the, not only the trauma, the injury, but uh, the real rehabilitation and those other things in life where uh, maybe they, they have returned now and uh, they're not going to be able to return to their job. Uh, they may need some retraining. Uh, this bill uh, provides for uh, tuition uh, for, uh, at a Minsky school or a trade school that's affiliated uh, with the Minnesota um, technical colleges uh, where they can find a new pathway in an education. It also has um, uh, money for uh, at a 50% rate for their children uh, below the age of 30 to also uh, um, uh, attain some uh, collegiate work. Now there's, uh, we could go into a, a myriad of details about what other qualifications the, their kids may have or they may have. But the gist of this is to, uh, for our commitment to those Purple Heart recipients to, to help them get back on their, their feet, stay here in Minnesota, and uh, have thriving lives with their family. Good. Thank you, Representative Weins. Uh, are there any questions or comments by members of the committee? And does anyone in the audience wish to testify? Is I, there... And I do have one testifier here, Mr. Ryan uh, Sabinish. Uh, a f uh, former commander of the Order of the Purple Heart in Minnesota, Mr. Savinish. Mr. Savinish, please identify yourself for the record, please. Members of the committee, my name is Ryan Savinish. I am the past state commander for the Minnesota Military Order of the Purple Heart. I'm also the past chapter commander of uh, Rochester for the Military Order of the Purple Heart. I received my Purple Heart serving in Iraq on March 23rd, 2007 as a gunner in a Humvee. I received seven pieces of shrapnel to my arm with severe blood loss, including a traumatic brain injury, and I had to be medevaced. And because of that, I am 100% service connected by the VA, including housebound rating, rated by the VA. This bill would provide me with the opportunity as a full-time <coughs> single parent father with custody to make sure my children, Stella, eight years old, and Riley, 13, receive receive an opportunity to go to school and I am not, I, excuse me, I am not, and I am not financially burdened with the cost, especially living off of social security disability and veteran, dis, veteran benefits. It provides me as a Purple Heart veteran <coughs> who, will, who will be graduating college in May 
with the opportunity to find part-time employment because I cannot work full-time because of my injuries. For me, college is a, is a medical, medical treatment for me and it gives, giving me an education keeps me busy and stops me from thinking about things that happen in Iraq. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Commander Sevenish. Uh, any questions at all of, okay. Seeing none, uh, Representative Weens renews his motion that House File 4976 be referred to the Higher Education Finance and Policy Committee. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Good. All three bills, what a trifecta. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Representative Norris, if you would come forward to rep for your bill, please. <clears throat> <clears throat> Representative Norris. All right. Thank you, Chair Newton, members of the committee. Uh, today we are revisiting House File 3454. Uh, it is going to become a vehicle bill for the agency bill for the Department of Military Affairs here in Minnesota. We have a DE2 amendment. Uh, and uh, all of the items that are included in the DE2 amendment are bills that the committee has previously heard. Uh, I don't believe that there's any controversy on any of them. It seemed like there was broad support for all of these provisions. Uh, and so we're simply packaging them together so we can send them on to the floor. Okay. Um, and all of these bills were heard. They, they, um, uh, had no opposition on the committee and they were all laid over for possible inclusion. And I see you have a testifier. <coughs> if you would, sir, please identify yourself for the record. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Eric Athman. I'm the Operations Director for the Minnesota Department of Military Affairs. Uh, Major General Sean Mankey sends his regrets. He wishes he could be here today. He is actually traveling to Norway to go visit uh, our most recent state partnership program, Norway. So he's checking in on that program to see how that is going. Uh, Mr. Kerr is tied up in another committee hearing right now, so he sent me on his behalf. So number three uh, in the uh, bat in order, so <laughs> not too bad. Uh, I just, I really want to thank the committee for the bipartisan, bipartisanship, uh, really, of these bills coming together. It really helps us clean up some of our authorities, uh, cleans up some of the definitions, really helps to protect some of our installations. Uh, and establishes programs for recruitment. So just overall, I'd like to say on behalf of the agency, thank you for, for putting this together uh, into the many military affairs omnibus. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Colonel. Are there any questions at all regarding the bill? Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to testify concerning the bill? Seeing none, um, uh, we've got a DE amendment first, yes. Um, and uh, the DE amendment does what uh, Representative Norris says it does. It just combines all of the bills into one bill. His, his bill that is going forward is the vehicle bill for that. So all in favor of the DE2 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, so we have the amendment. Uh, Representative Norris re renews his motion at House File 3454 as amended. Uh, be recommended to be placed on the general register. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, opposed? No. There we go. Um, so that bill is on its way. And this is the first of two bills. And what we're hoping to do is to get the, the Senate moving. And this will provide vehicles for them to, uh, their committee, the Veterans Committee in the uh, Senate is, encumbered by being in the <coughs> state government committee. And as a result of that, they're hearing all the state government bills and not getting to all the veterans bills in time. So this is one way to help them move the bills forward and to make sure that these bills that aren't gonna cost anything, uh, but our department bills move forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, Representative Olson, you have House File 3434, please, 4334. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a delete all amendment to this as well that would add uh, two other bills that we've heard in committee making this kind of a mini uh, mm -hmm. omnibus mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, Representative Olson moves the uh, DE2 amendment, author's amendment. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, uh, Representative Olson, uh, if you'd like to explain this more. Sure, Mr. Chair, I'll just really quickly talk about that. Not only does this uh, bill now talk about the forfeiture of benefits for individuals who commit um, major acts of, you know, such as treason, removing their VA benefits uh, in accordance with what the federal government does. It also now talks about uh, authorization for the planning of a new veteran cemetery near, near around Bemidji. And then the last one discusses uh, a new interpretation of the administrators uh, for how the commissioner will will discuss the administrators for veterans homes okay uh, any members of the committee have any comments at all do we have anyone in the audience who would like to comment on the bill once again this is a vehicle bill so representative ocean Olson recommend re <laughs> renews his motion that house file 4334 as amended be recommended to be placed on the general register. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, uh, that concludes the bills and surprisingly finishes our business. Uh, Representative Lisgard. Are we done? Yes. I would just, uh, I'd just like to um, encourage, I see a lot of veterans and organizations here and I really appreciate you here. Um, one of the um, most, uh, the critical is our VFW in Aurora. I mean, it's really, really important, and I know they're, I know they struggle. And so um, it's very, very important that you guys push very, very hard for House File 2000, and that is the um, that'll it'll be the sports betting, and that'll include the 40 million um, dollars in tax cuts, and it'll allow uh, VFWs and American Legions to spend more of your money. And um, I know that there are some people that are very, very concerned with the rising property taxes to put um, the shift of this bill um, on, on the, um, the taxpayers. And there is a real, real concern for that. So um, I'm gonna push for both. But um, if I was a betting man, I would say that um, it is the sports betting bill that is the, your best chance to help your VFWs and American legions. That is your best chance. And so I'm asking for help from you to push hard on that <coughs> one. Um, and I will do everything I can to see if I can um, get a hearing for that property tax shift that is much harder when there are a lot of elderly people on fixed incomes that when that shift goes over to them, it hurts them, and there's a lot of other organizations that are opposed to that much of a shift. So again, um, please advocate, send that same strong group to support Democrats and Republicans to get that um, sports betting over the finish line, and it will pay dividends for your organizations. Thank you, Representative Leslie Garrett. And I met uh, this morning with Representative Stevenson, who chairs the uh, Commerce Committee. And there has been a, an arrangement, uh, an agreement made with the, gar with, uh, the VFW and the Legion on this uh, sports betting bill. So just, just so you know that there has been an agreement uh, reached. Uh, any other comments by members of the committee? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you.